Cheat meals essentially have no place with our goals that we're looking to achieve. And the reason why cheat meals have no place is because they don't help us. They're not something that we can actually track and assess and know whether we are, you know, taking away from our progress that we've made so, so far, or if, you know, we're just kind of enjoying ourselves for a minute and everything's going to be okay. The reason why we don't know that is because cheat meals are very hard to track for number one. Um, and number two, a cheat meal implies that you are going to eat a large amount of calories, which you would typically not consume. And these foods are typically going to be very small, but high in calories. And you won't realize that you've just consumed double your normal intake for the day through these snacks or this cheat meal, which will of course slow down your rate of fat loss. So cheat meals are not great. What I like to consider is something called a relaxed meal. Now a relaxed meal might mean that you are still tracking your macros. Maybe you're guesstimating a little bit. You're still trying to hit your macronutrient targets, but maybe you're going out for dinner and you're having a steak with baked potato and vegetables, which is a little bit easier to guesstimate and to track. You're not going out and eating, you know, fast food, a whole pizza with a garlic bread and, you know, then ice cream after that or, you know, whatever it might be, or a bunch of alcohol. You're actually trying to stick to your goals, but you're allowing a little bit of room to be relaxed. So psychologically, you can have somewhat of a break from dieting, but still know that you're not too far away from your goals in regards to caloric intake, and it's not gonna have any negative outcomes as a result of that. So cheat meals are a big no for me. Let's guesstimate our food intake if we need to. Let's consider relaxed meals here and there if we need to as well. But what I will say is if you are close to your goal body weight um, or you're celebrating something in particular, then becoming more relaxed in that instance would be okay for that short period of time. So let's just say that I started uh, coaching uh, at 100 kilos and I was looking to get down to 90 kilos of body weight and I get down to 91, 92 and I want to kind of celebrate the success that I've created so far, you know, the eight to nine kilos of weight loss, it would be maybe okay to have a cheat meal or a relaxed meal or more relaxed meals at that point than it would be earlier on when I'm still 100 kilos. So the more progress you make, the more room we have to actually allow for these types of things. Maybe I've got a goal body weight range of being 89 to 92 kilos in general, and I'm okay with being 92, but I also like how I look at 89. If I'm dieting down and I get to 89 kilos, that obviously gives me more room, more options and opportunity to have more relaxed meals or cheat meals, right? Um, where I'm still within my range body weight that I prefer. And if I notice that the scale's creeping up and now I'm like 91 kilos, I'm getting up to that 92 again, obviously we become a little bit more diligent, more consistent, more accurate, and we pull things back and we you know, stick to our you know, correct macro tracking or meal planning to ensure that we stay on track. So if you have a goal body weight range, that might allow you to enjoy a little bit more flexibility and freedom. But again, cheat meals are not something that I would typically recommend for anybody.